Hello, Book Two. Uh, this is the Rambling Raconteur Jack, uh, back for an actual <laughs> book review. Um, and so this is hopefully what uh, I'll be doing more frequently on here is as I finish reading works, I'll just kind of share a little bit about them, uh, some thoughts on them, and then perhaps some other texts that they might connect to, either that they reference or that are similar to them, uh, so that if, if you are interested in this, or have read it, some other works you might consider reading, or if you've read those works and enjoyed them, you might consider reading this. And so this is uh, the first volume of The Sleepwalkers by uh, the um, German or German or Austrian novelist uh, Hermann Brock. Um, and so it's a modernist work. It was uh, created and written and published in the 1930s. And so it's, it's very much of a piece with European modernism. And although it's written and published after World War I, uh, the works themselves are set before World War I. And uh, I finished reading the first volume of The Sleepwalkers. It's a trilogy. The first volume is The Romantic, which is set in the late 1880s uh, in the uh, German Empire. But it, the German Empire wasn't very old at that time. It had been consolidated under Kaiser Wilhelm I uh, and Otto von Bismarck, the German Chancellor, fairly recently. They had won victories over a couple of other countries and unified different German principalities, dukedoms, kingdoms into a single uh, empire with a single Kaiser. And as part of that, their military had become highly uh, professional. It would become arguably the most professional army and would be through World War I in Europe. Uh, really, and even in the world. And so Brock is writing this this novel, uh, The Romantic, <clears throat> which is part of The Sleepwalkers. It's an absolutely fantastic cover. It's a uh, painting by Picasso, the uh, Les Moulins Moulin de la Galette by Picasso, and just uh, very much evokes the Belle Epoque and pre-war European setting that is within the novel. Um, this is the first Brock novel I've read. I have had been looking for this book for well over a decade, uh, since about 2008, when I first read uh, The Man Without Qualities by Robert Musso, the great uh, Austro-Hungarian novel, modernist novel. And as I was reading that, one of the books, one of the writers I saw referenced along with Thomas Mann and Stefan Zweig was Hermann Brock. And so I you know, searched for a copy that, copy of this book for a long, long time. And finally, last year, in, uh, on a trip to San Francisco, right around the corner from our Airbnb was a small used bookstore that my wife and I went by and found both a copy of this and Brock's other novel, um, The Death of Virgil. And so I was very excited to finally get it and dip in. And so it's the uh, first book I finished reading in 2020. And I'll go on, I keep a little list that I write out of I have a tiny notation I make of things I would reread or things that I won't reread and just different little notations on, on, my, uh, on my list, but it'll go in. It's a, a really well-written book. It's of that piece of, of European modernisms where the, the sentences are just formed like a Fabergé uh, egg. You know, the, the sentences themselves are almost works of art. The way that uh, paragraphs just flow like a mountain or like a stream just endlessly the the sentences and, and uh flow within a paragraph to form a paragraph that's four pages long easily and sometimes that can be daunting for a reader because i think naturally we get to the end of a paragraph and we, we almost get this little like brain break and so when you're reading something that that has paragraphs that long it can be a little demanding uh but but it, it's extremely well written it focuses on a uh, family <clears throat> in uh, both sort of rural Germany on sort of a, 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 a Junker estate um, in rural Germany, but then the main character, uh, Joachim von Passenau, is in the German army and he's stationed in Berlin. And so many of the scenes take place in Berlin, but it could be really any European city at, in that time period of the 1880s. And so we're, we're really, in the sense of modernism, we're really deeply in his consciousness. We're, we're embedded in his thoughts and what he's thinking, why he's thinking it, 
what his motivations are, the, the neuroses that seem to just cloud every decision he makes. What's fascinating about this book is that it, it gives us that with the main character, a central character, but it also dips into the psyche and sort of cuts down into his father, into uh, the two women that he is interested in and, and, and alternately falling in and out of love with. It cuts a little bit with his, uh, with his friend, um, Edward von Bertrand, who has left the army. And so it's, it's a really fascinating look at how right as, and, and this novel was written right as the world was truly going to hell, but within the novel, the society seems to be heading, you know, going to hell. Uh, it's what makes so many of the European modernist novels so fascinating is that they're, they're crystallizations of a society right before it's about to shatter, right before it's, it's all about to just fall apart. And seeing who people are in that time as, as that's going on is, is truly fascinating. I wanted to read a short selection from it. <clears throat> Whenever Joachim von Passenau was compelled to put on civilian clothes, Edward von Bertrand came into his mind, and he was always glad that Mufti did not sit on him with the same assurance as on that man. Yet he was very eager to know what Bertrand's views were on the question of uniform. For Edward von Bertrand had, of course, every reason to reflect on the problem, seeing that he had laid aside the uniform once and for all, and decided for the clothing of a civilian. That had been astonishing enough. And and so you see those the, the way the sentences sort of just flow together later on. But even if he thrust aside those thoughts as foolish and accepted the uniform as a decree of nature, there was more in all this than a mere question of attire more than a something which gave his life style at least, if not content. Often he fancied that by saying, comrades in the king's uniform, he could put an end to the whole question, and to Bertrand too, although in doing so he was far from desiring to express any extraordinary reverence for the king's uniform, or to indulge in overweening vanity. He was rather concerned that his elegance of figure should neither exceed nor fall short of a definitely demarcated and prescribed correctness. And he had actually been a little flattered when once some ladies expressed the opinion, which was well grounded, that the straight wooden cut of the uniform and the glaring colors of the bright cloth went but indifferently with his face, and that the brown velvet jacket and flowing necktie of an artist would suit him far better. And that's just a single sentence that takes up almost half a page. So you can see the, the style of the book is very much this, this sense of, the author says something or a character thinks something and then that thought or, or that idea is reframed in a slightly more precise way and then added to and contextualized in a slightly different way and then again that context is reframed and, and it just sort of wraps into this world that is truly fascinating um, and so I did enjoy this I look forward to reading the second volume The Anarchist uh, set sort of in the same area uh, but some years later, I believe set around um, just before the war is breaking out or right as the war is breaking out. So 1910, 1914, 1915. Uh, and then there's a third volume so, set at the end or right after the World War I has ended when the society that this novel has built up truly has just all shattered and fallen apart. Um, I really in, enjoyed reading it and, and I, I would recommend it. Some books that um, you might read if you've read Herman Brock or read Herman Brock if you've read these and had some thoughts. <clears throat> of course, the one that drew me to it was The Man Without Qualities by Robert Musil. Another one sort of within that, and I think uh, that more closely aligns to this than his other work, is The Good Soldier by Ford Maddox Ford. So again, set in that pre-war era where there are relationships, um, particularly the with this one, I was thinking of the, sort of the parallel couples, how there's two men, two women that are sort of at the center of the novel. Um, and not, you know, the neuroses, characters who are very um, inquisitive or, or fearful of, of change in a sense. Another one is uh, Blood Dark by Louis Guillot, uh, written around the same time, set on a single day in 1917 in uh, the Normandy countryside. So outside of where the war is occurring, but as it's occurring. And one of the similarities is 
within Blood Dark, the main character of the novel, his psyche is probed very, very deeply and thoroughly. But the other secondary characters are also explored quite in depth. There, uh, there's some revelations around their motivations, and that was very similar in Sleepwalk, in the Romantic of the Sleepwalkers um, by Herman Brock. Uh, although Joachim von Passenow is the main character, and we really get to know him well, and we don't really want to, but we do get to know him well. Uh, we do get to know uh, two female characters, Rosena and Elizabeth, uh, sort of a neighbor and uh, a woman he meets there in Berlin, and then his friend Edward von Bertrand. We get to know his father on uh, their rural estate very well, and uh, and all of those characters are wrapped up in their own, you know, fears and neuroses, and, and Blood Dark was very similar in that respect. Um, almost identical is The Radetzky March by Joseph Roth, a uh, great Austro-Hungarian novel set at the end of that empire, and um, like Robert Musil's Man Without Qualities, and very much of a piece with the both of them, written kind of at the same time. And then the, the book that uh, Brock references in the Romantic is uh, actually Goethe's Faust. So a number of the characters continually think of both the opera and the, the tragedy Faust, and, and there are adjectives around Mephistophelian, adjec adjectives around Faust, and comparing some of the characters to Margaret or Margarita uh, and Gretchen from Faust. And so um, there, there is a sense of intertextuality. It, it doesn't have the similar narrative. Um, Joaquin von Passnow in no sense is Faust. Bertrand is in no sense Mephistopheles. But you can tell that it, it's a text that's in Brock's mind as he's writing. The final note on this book is it's translated by uh, the Muirs, um, Ed, Will and Edwin Muir, who were uh, famous for originally translating Kafka and taking some liberties uh, with his language and his, his imagery and metaphor and his sentence structure. And I, here's the thing, I don't speak German. I'm unlikely to ever learn how to speak or read German. I am very grateful to anyone who speaks both languages and, and can translate a work like this so that I get the opportunity to read it. I think that's fantastic. Um, I don't want to comment too much on Brock's specific imagery or style because I don't know how much of that is his and how much of that is the mirrors as translators just because I, I know that was done with Kafka's work having read both their translation and other uh, more recent revision translations. So um, just a final note on that, but again, truly fantastic book, well worth the time. About a, um, that first volume, The Romantic, within the trilogy is a, uh, about 160 pages, so a day or two of reading, but well worth uh, the exploration and the plunge. Thank you, Booktube.